All right, so Neil Botcher and Andy Davis here at CES. We're about to walk the floor and take you on a little journey in terms of what we think is most interesting to the show. I think what I'm what I'm anticipating and what I'm excited to sort of bring you here as we take you through the day at CES are a lot of these organizations that are focused on products that target really interesting and novel ways to get into the body, diagnose, developing and create data, in some cases going directly to the consumer, in other cases going to the provider, but it continues the future of health journey, which is earlier diagnosis and pushing people into the system and hopefully wrestling with health and disease maybe earlier in its, in its progression. Andy, what, what's, what for you are you excited about? I'd say two, two things. I'm really excited to see the advancements in science. We, we talk about measuring data right now, but are we measuring really what's causing disease? And I think we're gonna be able to show you some really interesting things where we're actually getting to disease states that are measurable, that get in front of disease, which we've been talking about for five years. The other element is how do we make this accessible? This is an amazing, we're gonna see so much amazing technology. How do we actually get it in the hands of every single individual? We're gonna showcase an example where it's right in front of you. You don't have to wear it, you don't have to buy it, but you can have it. And to me, that's gonna be exciting. So come along on the ride, we'll take you through the show. Let us know what you think. Andy, live at CES, here looking at all of the innovation award nominees. And what we're gonna to talk to you right now is about some of the innovation that's happening right now around care for the elderly, really looking at how do you diagnose dementia? What you have here is an innovation that is less invasive than most other technologies around diagnosing Alzheimer's and dementia. And what it does is it actually can find chemicals within your blood that can do this quickly within 10 minutes and diagnose someone with pretty accurate results, up to 90% accurate, around whether or not you have Alzheimer's or dementia. Now imagine sitting in an x-ray booth for an hour trying to get the same scan, 10 minutes blood scan, relatively easy and painless. I'm gonna pass it to Neil. So it's, so it's an absolute thrill to be here. And so as we think, as we look at these age-oriented um, devices and, and honorees, what's so interesting is we continue to believe segmentation is going to matter when it comes to the future of health. And the ability to parse on particular populations will have real market potential. So these three that we're going to feature are really age-oriented. To Andy's point, the first one was blood-based. This one that we're pointing to right here is actually a wearable that looks at body diagnostics and biologics to see if you can actually detect decline over time. And then the third one that we want to talk about is actually um, one that is oriented around speech. And so what this starts to give you is a sense of a couple things. One, segmentation is going to matter. Two, particular populations are going to have unique and distinctive needs that you're going to have to orient the technology around. And three, nobody really knows which of these approaches is the best. Is the blood-based test the best? Is the speech-based test the best? Is the wearable the best? Highly unclear. And so we continue to be in this mass fragmentation moment where you're gonna have organizations and products competing intensely around who actually wins for the future of health, in this case, when it comes to aging and dementia. So one of the innovations that we've seen here at CES uh, that we think is really interesting is this technology where it actually scans your nails and it's a way to gauge sort of full body health. In this case, we're looking at nutrients and other insights around health, but it, it runs along the example that we continue to believe that you're gonna see really novel ways to get diagnostics on the body in this case, nails, which is the first time I think we've seen that. But then at the show, you've seen lots of examples of ear-based insights, eye-based insights, lots of wearables. And it's gonna be a major theme here as we play out towards the future of health, the ability to generate data off the individual through novel entry points, and then drive that to insights. Are we at the insights point yet? Probably not as an industry, but you can see it getting there in the next couple of years. Yeah, we've spent a lot of time at CS when we, when we navigated the floor, seeing how new technology is really driving down towards an individual. And we've been saying this for years, the technology and the innovation that's gonna happen is gonna drive towards end of one personal care. And what you're seeing here is an innovative, smart technology designed for children around autism. And again, the hyper segmentation that we see around, the, around all this innovation showcases the fact that technology is going to meet individuals, the disease states, really where they're at, which is what we've been saying for five years in the future of health, and we're starting to see it now here live at CES. So as we continue to look through the honorees here at CES, what, what really struck us was this innovation in particular, which is a gut-focused uh, gut device 
uh, that goes after sound to understand body diagnostics and get some readings in terms of what's going on within your health. What's so fascinating is we haven't seen a lot of gut and microbiome technology uh, in the market to date. So this is really exciting because it's another novel entry point into the body and another way to actually get body diagnostics. What's also fascinating, and this is a running debate that we're going to continue to sort of flex on as we discuss here, is what's the market approach for these organizations? Do you go through the classic channel of, of an FDA approval that then goes through hospitals and you sell to physicians that ultimately get to consumers? Or do you go direct to consumer? In this case, this is a direct to consumer sound-based device and it's fascinating because it actually puts the control in the individual's hand the question is going to be not just for this device, but for all devices, is the data that's generated rich enough for an individual to actually action and move forward and just begin to let us do the things we're trying to do here, which is early diagnostics, disease avoidance, healing and recovery faster, and overall being healthy and, and, and more oriented around our wellness. To be seen, but really exciting things happening here at CES.